My warmest welcome to all of the esteemed guests who have come here from faraway places and to all the devotees and guests who have come here who live locally. Conferences means a place where we come and confer and exchange the best of ideas to improve the world. People are looking for ideas in the world. Wherever we go, it's the natural inclination of human beings to try to find out a better, more comfortable way of life. The Vedas give eternal knowledge about not only how to live comfortably in this world, but also, also to attain the ultimate perfection of life, going back home, back to Godhead. In the Gita, Krishna says, Jagnar tat karmano nyatra loko yam karma bandhana tadartam karma konteya mukta sangha samachara. This yagya is counterintuitive to what most people think is the way to be happy in the world. We seek comfort now through technological means. There are automobiles that resemble the inside of one's living room with all of the amenities that should make one happy. Nonetheless, there's a growing sense of anxiety in the world today. Wherever we go, although people have created so-called comfortable situations, there's a feeling of unrest, of dissatisfaction. When we go regularly to various corporations here in the Bay Area and speak, to the employees, for instance, at Salesforce and Google and Intel we went to last week. We find that although people are gainfully employed and working on amazingly complex projects, they're still seeking much higher answers to life. So Krishna gives it very clearly in the Gita, in the verse that I just quoted, Jagnar Tak Kamanon Nyatra. At the beginning of creation, this idea is given to everyone and is meant to be propagated that by arranging one's life in such a way as to please Krishna, then human society, or to speak of animal society and the natural world becomes well adjusted. And without being properly adjusted or properly aligned, there can be no harmony. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, it is said by the sage Sutta Goswami, that this world is controlled by various modes of nature. And unless we understand how they work and come to the higher modes, especially sattva gun, there can be no light. Once when I was in Los Angeles at the Rathiatra, Many years ago, Bala Bhadra Prabhu, I think he used to bring the bulls all the way across from, from Gita Nagari, Pennsylvania. He would bring the bulls all the way to Los Angeles, California, and we'd set up a pen, much like the one out there. And the bulls would simply sit there peacefully, uh, having grass, and thousands of people would come to see them. And one day when I was admiring them, as they are a sight to admire, if you simply look at a bull or a cow, you'll feel peaceful, happy. A man with a very small child came, and they were looking inside the enclosure. And as they looked in, the little boy, must have been about six years old, with very wide eyes, said to his father, Daddy, what is it? And when I heard that, I was reminded of how disjointed our entire modern culture is uh, from Mother Cow. Although we depend on the cow, she remains invisible. To understand how the cow and its relationship with us is symbiotic in this world and what we, how we can attain great benefits, Prabhupada said, is a great mystery to the human mind, or at least 
to the intellectual mind. But the Vedas say that there's a way in which yajna is performed in a circle. Krishna describes this in the third chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. By performing yajna, then the rains come. When the rains come, the grasses grow. What can you do with grass? But the cows take the grass like nectar. And then they produce the nectarian beverage milk, which sustains human society. But more importantly, even, it is turned into ghee, which is meant for yajna. And by the yajna, then, the rains come. This secular, sacrificial performance uh, must be there in human society for there to be happiness. But if you try to uh, present that in an intellectual assembly or in a corporate environment or to the person on the street, they may think that sounds archaic or simplistic. However, when people actually come in contact with Vedic culture, which is full of aesthetics, for instance, when that little boy saw the cow, he had a visceral experience of seeing such a wonderful animal. And people can fall in love with these experiences that they have, or they can be touched deeply by them, and their hearts can be changed. So it's a vital aspect, if not the most vital, to maintain the culture of the cow. Recently, when I was in New York City, last weekend or the weekend before, I can't remember which, uh, <laughs> I was aware of the fact that we're in an enclosed environment. People are rushing around from one place to the next, trying to find something nice. They're looking down streets into windows. Where can they find some satisfaction through some libation, through hearing some new sound, some music? But practically speaking, that enclosed environment, people are going crazy. They're locked in, and they can't, as Prabhupada writes in the Bhagavatam, feel and experience mm, the great light of the spiritual world. So it's a vital part of our mission here at Iskand Silicon Valley, what to speak of all the centers around the world that are following Srila Prabhupada, to instill this spirit of protecting the cow, not just the spirit, but the actual uh, enactment and organization of taking care of cows and serving them and depending on them. So f from this conference today, we can uh, move forward with steps to increase the culture of cow protection here in Iskand, Silicon Valley, and if it can be done here, it can be done anywhere in the world. Srila Prabhupada, when we read through all his teachings, again and again emphasizes that this is one of the main missions of the Krishna consciousness movement. Without it, we really haven't completed our mission at all. He also indicates that this is something that we've forgotten in human society almost completely. He mentions a time when he was younger and he saw a man in Calcutta selling a book about cow protection and someone else challenged him and said, uh, why would you need that? Everybody knows how to protect cows. From Indian culture, Vedic culture, it's very well known that without living with the cow, without protecting the cow, then one cannot reach one's full potential, and everybody knew how to do it. But it's something that the world has forgotten. When I was in Duvrindavan, I was watching some cows grazing on a very green hillside. And I stood there mesmerized as they very voraciously munched down huge clumps of grass, and moving from one hillside to the next. And I felt a deep satisfaction just sitting there watching the cows, appreciating how they love the grass. And I was thinking how Krishna has made a perfect arrangement. People just don't know about it. Actually, people are 
naturally good-hearted. Here in America, people are naturally pious, but they've become disconnected. So this conference today is a wonderful step towards bringing awareness back to the Silicon Valley and the rest of the world about the ways in which living with cows, serving the cows, coming closer to Vedic culture, Srimad Bhagavatam, is actually the greatest boon for human society and for each individual. Thanks to Sri Krishna Purushottam, Sri Ram Prabhu, Bhakti Raghava Swami, for, and all the other organizers, and esteemed guests who have, have come many miles to help organize this conference. And we'll take this forward from here. We've already had many discussions recently at, at ISKCON of Silicon Valley about uh, moving forward towards keeping cows in the center of our organization. Be naturally connected with a rural center where cow protection is going on. Th this way people can come to know that one doesn't exist without the other. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.